If you would like more information or have a need that you would like to speak to somebody about, please seek out the information on the slide. And as we come together, we just acknowledge the territories. As we gather to worship, let us pause to remember that in this region, we live and work and worship on the lands that are, by law, the unceded territories of the Wabanaki peoples, predominantly the lands of the Mi'kmaq, Maliseet, Passamaquoddy, and Penobscot. May we live with respect on this land and live in peace and friendship with its people. So we've got lots of announcements today, and I know that we have some special things to show, but I just want to draw your attention to a few different things. I just want to remind everyone we have started the year with new faces in our community. And so we welcomed Reverend Richard Barley on January 1st, and now we welcome Stephen Alexander on February 1st. And Stephen's here in the sanctuary getting a sense of things with you. So we look forward to welcoming him to the team as well. And Yuna, you may want to speak to this as well, but there's going to be a virtual snowman competition and we're going to get a chance this week. There's going to be a big storm. So after the snow, create an amazing snow person, take a picture of you beside it and send it in for the competition. And just to remind everyone, the outreach spending is really active. The local school breakfast program and Rose Martin and Jane Barefoot are delivering fresh fruit, milk, etc., to the school on a weekly basis. So that's fantastic. And Yuna, you, do you have anything you would like to say? Wendy, it, it's Barb and when, when I, I get a chance. Wilson, the new youth group coordinator. We are starting a really fun youth group Zoom every other Sunday. You'll get to hang out with myself and my good friend, Percy. <laughs> If you are interested in signing up, you can either ta uh, send an email to una, U-N-A dot Wilson, W-I-L-S-O-N, at live.com, or send her a text or call at 467-8261, or just give her home number a call at 849-2217. I look forward to meeting everybody. And please, if you are feeling shy or just think you have someone, a friend that would want to join, tell them they are welcome. I will see you all this Sunday. Bye. Thanks. Wendy, could, could I add to the outreach announcement, please? It's Barb. Absolutely. Go ahead, Barb. I just wanted to point out that wonderful chance that Molly McGuire posted in our announcements concerning the newcomers program at, and at the St. John Y. And as you would have read, Molly is Carol Ann and Barry's granddaughter. Uh, but we somehow neglected to get her contact information in on that note. So it'll be there next week, but it would be a perfect opportunity for any of you who are feeling a little bound in during COVID because all of the uh, work would be done virtually or on the phone. So if you would like to contact her before next week when the, uh, con the contact information gets there, just uh, give Carol Ann and Barry a call or me or send me an email or send it to Leslie at the office. Thank you and please consider that. It would be a, a great opportunity for those of you with some, uh, some time and some energy in that direction. Thank you. Thanks, Barb. Oh. Just want to remind everyone who has young families, um, as you can see, we're trying to make small changes and build our youth ministry here at QUC. So keep a lookout for everything that's coming along and join us this Sunday as we share the story of the day and see where God is at work in the lives of all, from the youngest to the oldest. And then just one last thing for everyone, the tax receipts and offering envelopes. Normally you would be looking for your tax receipts only by mail, snail mail that is, but now you can actually have an email to you. So if you'd like that, you can let um, send it to the Kimball um, email address that's there in the announcements. So I just have uh, uh, two quick announcements. So just like Erica said, we're looking, she's looking forward to meeting you and hopefully everyone will be able to check out the uh, Zoom youth group. And my cell phone is 647. 8261. And also, just a reminder, 
as Wendy said, about the snow person competition. So hopefully we don't have to resort to the snow people that my grandchildren made. And hopefully, Wendy, that you're right, that we will be getting some snow. So have a good week, everyone. Thanks, Edith. I have one quick announcement before we light the candle, if that's okay, Wendy. I'm gonna take that as permission to start talking. Um, many of you know that uh, Joan uh, has been in the hospital for the last week. Uh, we are fortunate to have uh, her phone number and she would love to get some phone calls. So uh, I'm putting her phone number at the hospital in the, uh, in the chat. So please go there and grab it. It's 648-8633. Give her a call. She would love to hear from you. And are there any celebrations that anyone would like to share? Uh, we, we've already heard some wonderful things, but any other ones? Hearing so that? my granddaughter turned one. They live in Halifax. Happy birthday. All right, well, thanks everyone. And just keep a lookout for all these things that are happening. There's a lot on that list. And I'll just welcome Reverend Richard now. The candle that we light is more than a light. It is a symbol of Christ alive and moving in our midst. His light guides us and his embrace warms us. Let us follow this light through worship and beyond. And I welcome Pat to play for us water music by Handel. Just, I don't know if you can hear me. I did forget an important announcement. So Erica is using her Zoom, not the church's Zoom. And I did send that announcement out to the church families. Yeah. Uh, and I'm not sure if, uh, if they're aware in the sanctuary, but we're not getting uh, the prelude. So uh, take this time to read through the, uh, the, the centering passage for the day um, as, as we prepare to begin worship. As we uh, prepare to move into our time of worship, uh, one thing that I did forget to mention is that during the season of Lent, I will be leading uh, confirmation classes for those aged 12 and up. Uh, I've been contacted or I have contacted some parents already. So uh, if you haven't gotten in touch with me, do so and uh, information will be coming this week.
Richard, are you going to lead the greeting? Yes, I just wasn't sure if the music was over because the slide hadn't moved forward. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us call one another into this time of worship in our various spaces as we make this time and our spaces holy. We come to this time. Sometimes out of habit, sometimes because it is what we do on Sunday mornings. But our faith is so much more than routine. It is part of who we are, part of what defines us. And so we come to this time. To rediscover our faith and the part that we play in God's continuous creating. Let us worship God together and let us pray. As we enter into this time, O oh God, we pray that you send your spirit among us. Encourage us when we doubt, when we are unsure of why we are here or what we are doing. Inspire us with your word and kindle again the flame of passion for exploring our faith. Empower us to share our faith with one another and with the world, because it is in the sharing that we are strengthened. We offer this prayer in the name of the one who challenges us and helps us find deeper meaning, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our opening hymn this morning is Come and Find a Quiet, the Quiet Center. The words will be on the screen uh, and Wendy and Sue will lead us, but I encourage everyone at home uh, to sing with your, with your mics muted, of course. Thank you very much, uh, and not just Wendy and Sue, but Ruth as well, I believe, is there. So thank you very much for leading us in that music. Uh, I think that we've got some uh, someone special to lead us in our theme conversation today, Ethan Ben. Maybe. I love being at home, especially after a long day at school. One of the reasons is that I love to take off my school shoes and go about in my slippers.
how many of you take off your shoes as soon as you can after walking in the door from school or work? I do. The problem is <laughs> life brings us things our way that are painful or even dangerous. much better having shoes on. Being a Christian is like wearing shoes. Sometimes we are not as comfortable as others because God is making us into soldiers or warriors for his cause. Sometimes we can feel fear though we have God's protection and grace. Being a Christian is not easy, but God has promised to be faithful. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to thy name, O Most High, to declare thy steadfast love in the morning and thy faithfulness by night. <laughs> being like a sturdy pair of shoes, for protecting and loving us. Sometimes we think it's uncomfortable to be Christian, but you show us the way to go, and you protect our feet as we strive to walk in Jesus' footsteps. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, guys. How, how are your feet after walking on the stones? Um, they hurt. <laughs> they hurt, yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's strange the things that we do to ourselves uh, that end up hurting, hurting, like, Lego on the floor, stepping on that hurts probably, I don't know if it hurts more than the rocks, but they look, the Lego looks sharper than the rocks you were walking on. Um, but one of the things that I wanted to talk about that actually what you guys did brings to really good, really well into focus are the things that we do in our lives uh, out of routine that we don't even think about. Like, have you ever gone to a room looking for something and then forgot why you went there? Yeah? yeah like maybe you're going to the kitchen to get some milk and you get to the kitchen you're like why am i here or you go to your room to clean up right yeah yeah <laughs> but you end up playing some more right yeah. yeah that doesn't hurt you but there's lots of stuff that we do in our lives that we just do out of routine we do out of habit and when we stop to think about it there are better and safer ways that we can do that and it's the same way in our faith we have a lot of things that we do throughout our worship that we do throughout our faith lives that we don't really know why we do it but when we stop to think about it we come to know how much more important it is like the ways that we pray or the places that we sit on sunday morning did you know that growing up daddy sat in the same pew with his dad for 18 years the exact same pew Anybody else out there sit in the same pew every single Sunday? Hands up. Yeah, there's, there's a few. Does everyone remember why you sit there? <laughs> maybe, maybe it's because you've always sat there. <laughs> or maybe it's because that's where your parents sat. That's where you grew up sitting, right? You guys don't have that because we've, we've been in three different churches. So you don't have the same pew over and over again, right? No. So before uh, we move on for the rest of the service, I want the kids and the adults to think about the different things that they do in life without even thinking. And then I want you to take a moment and think why you're doing that thing. Maybe it's still important, or maybe there's a new way. Can we pray together? Sure. sure. Let's pray. Everybody repeat after me. Dear God, Dear God help us your children, help us your children to, live faith, to live our faith to discover our faith, to discover our faith, and to follow closely to you. 
We ask this in all things. And we ask this in all things. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you very much. Can I get hugs? Ah, thank you very much. Ah. And now we move on in our service uh, to, to prepare ourselves for the reading. So I would encourage you to follow along with me for the prayer of illumination as we seek God's revelatory power uh, as we approach the word. Let us pray together. Open to us your word, O oh God. Remind us that we are not just here to listen to stories, but that we come here, come together as a community of faith, seeking deeper truth. Walk with us, teach us, and show us the way. We ask this in the name of Christ, your word in our lives. Amen. And now I'd like to invite Wendy to lead our, or to offer our scripture. The reading this morning is from Luke chapter 6, verses 1 to 16. One Sabbath, while Jesus was going through the cornfields, his disciples plucked some heads of grain, rubbed them in their hands, and ate them. But some of the Pharisees said, Why are you doing what is not lawful on the Sabbath? Jesus answered, Have you not read what David did when he and his companions were hungry? He entered the house of God and took and ate the bread of the presence, which is not lawful for any but the priests to eat, and gave some to his companions. Then he said to them, The Son of Man is the Lord of the Sabbath. On another Sabbath he entered the synagogue and taught, and there was a man there whose right hand was withered. The scribes and the Pharisees watched him to see whether he would cure on the Sabbath, so that they might find an accusation against him. Even though he knew what they were thinking, he said to the man who had the withered hand, Come and stand here. He got up and stood there. Then Jesus said to them, I ask you, is it lawful to do good or to do harm on the Sabbath, to save life or to destroy it? After looking around at all of them, he said to them, stretch out your hand. He did so, and his hand was restored. But they were filled with fury and discussed with one another what they might do to Jesus. Now during those days, he went out to the mountain to pray, and he spent the night in prayer to God. And when day came, he called his disciples and chose 12 of them, whom he also named apostles, Simon, whom he named Peter, and his brother Andrew, and James, and John, and Philip, and Bartholomew, and Matthew, and Thomas, and James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon, who was called the Zealot, and Judas, son of James, and Judas Iscariot, who became a traitor. This is the word of God. Praise be to you, our creator.
thank you very much, uh, Wendy, for leading us in the word, uh, Pat for playing, Wendy, Sue, and Ruth for leading us in that wonderful music. Uh, we turn now seeking God's guidance through the word, and so let us pray. Transforming spirit, move in and through us as we reflect on your word. Help us to hear the truth in these words, not just of the stubbornness of the people in Christ's day, but the stubbornness in our day, in our own community of faith, maybe even in us. Help us to be more than a people of ritual, more than people of habit and routine. Guide us to a place of rediscovery. Encourage us as we rediscover the why of our faith, Speak to us, O Spirit, for you are the wisdom that is the core of the church, and we need your guidance. Hear our prayer this day and inspire us. Amen. So as we continue on our journey of Christ's ministry through the Gospel of Luke, we can see how the reactions of people have evolved, how different groups have been responding to his teachings and to his actions. Weeks and weeks ago, actually it was my first Sunday here on January 3rd, we heard the story of Christ's baptism. There, very few people, except perhaps John, even knew who this man was. He was just another in a long line of people being baptized. Jumping forward in his ministry, but not too far, we see that people were starting to take notice, so much so that those of his hometown had heard the news but couldn't recon reconcile the Jesus that they watched growing up with the Christ who was before them. So it was a mixed bag of acceptance and rejection among the people. Last week, we heard of a huge group outside of Genesaret, though they were probably from all over. They were pressing in on Jesus to hear him, to touch him, to be transformed by him. He is not just known now but he is sought out by the people. And this is where things start to get dangerous for the carpenter's son turned prophet who is being called the Messiah. Now, more than just ordinary people are starting to take notice of Jesus. Religious officials have heard of his name on more than one occasion and are taking umbrage with the fact that he has become so popular, that he has garnered so many followers that he is teaching in a way that isn't necessarily in opposition to the law, but is calling into question their interpretation of the law. That's where we are today, where the religious officials have taken notice of Christ and his teachings and are trying their best to make him look foolish, at least, and blasphemous at best. In our reading today, we have two stories where Jesus or his followers are seemingly breaking the law, which the officials think is good fodder for them to undermine this upstart ministry. Both take place on a different day, but both are Sabbath days, days of rest. Both are perceived in fractions of the same law. In the first, the followers of Christ are the ones who are getting him into hot water. While they're walking along the road from one place to another on a Sabbath day, some of the disciples are seen picking off the heads of grain and eating them. Now, at first, when I read this passage years ago, I thought that the Pharisees took issue with the fact that the disciples were taking and eating something that wasn't theirs, that they were stealing. But actually, the problem is that they're plucking the heads of grain, harvesting them working on the Sabbath, essentially, the law at the heart of both stories. Rather than comment on the law itself, Jesus points to a legend among his people, King David, and the fact that when he and his friends were hungry, they ate some sacred bread reserved for the priests. With someone like King David breaking the law, how could they speak out against Jesus? Again, on another Sabbath, the officials are watching Jesus very closely, because aside from his teachings, which they did not like, they wanted to see if he would heal anyone, 
and in essence, work on the Sabbath. Jesus did not disappoint. And when a man with a withered hand is brought forward, all eyes are on him. And I am sure that the Pharisees were paying close attention. Before doing anything, Jesus asks a question. He asks it to the man, to the crowd, to everyone present. He even waits for an answer, but does not get one. He invites the man to then stretch out his hand. And lo and behold, it is healed. Jesus knew, whether through divine inspiration or the fact that maybe they stood out in a crowd, that the religious officials were present. They were trying to undermine him. And so Jesus does what Jesus often does. He questions the law without actually bringing into question a particular law. Rather than contradict the laws regarding working on the Sabbath, he asks a simple question. Is it lawful to do good or to do harm on the Sabbath? To save life or to destroy it? Though he doesn't get an answer, it should be obvious to us, as it probably was to many in the room. If anything is, to be, is lawful to be done on the Sabbath, good is lawful. Saving is lawful. The real issue that both of these stories bring our attention to is not any particular law, but the reason behind the law, both generally and specifically. In this case, he's asking us and the people of his day to have a look at the laws around prohibiting work on the Sabbath. In looking through our holy scriptures, we come to know that these laws were not created or put in place to be prohibitive, but to be restorative. Work six days a week, sure, but on that seventh day, rest as our Creator did. Put all of yourself into the world for six days, but take one day to recharge. And if we take a long look at many of the laws in the First Testament, we can find that most exist to encourage right relationships with one another, to avoid illness, and most of all, to make sure that the people all the people are cared for, that no one is forgotten. Still, over time, laws and rules have a way of taking on a life of their own so that the reason for the law gets lost in the enforcing of the law. Jesus calls the people to reevaluate the spirit of the law, the spirit of why they do what they do the way that they do. This call is just as much for us as it was for the people of Christ's own day, because we know all too well how easy it is to get into a routine and then forget what got us there. One really good example from my own ministry history is from a church that I was serving during my internship. For some reason, everyone, everyone sat on the right side of the church. The entire left side was completely empty and no one sat there except for when the place was filled during Christmas. When someone who wasn't used to coming showed up they, and sat on the left-hand side, people would, would turn and they would look over at them. They wouldn't say anything, but eventually the person sitting on the left-hand side would move over to the right-hand side just to stop the staring. It took me a long time to find out why this was, why people sat only on the right side of the church. I asked a few people, and for the most part, the answer was, it's where I've always sat. Eventually, I found someone who could remember. The pulpit in this sanctuary was located on the right side of the church, and it did not have a mic. And the organ was on the left, so people sat on the right side of the church so they could hear better. It was a simple reason, but one that got forgotten over time. How many of our traditions are like that? Things that we say and do out of routine, but without any thoughts as to why we do them or what it means when we say certain words. One really good example in our time is something called the passing of the peace. It isn't something I've seen done over the course of the pandemic because generally it involves 
shaking hands and getting very close to someone. But along with that, you would look them in the eye and you would say, peace of Christ be with you. To which the knee-jerk reaction is, a response is, and also with you. But do we know what we mean when we say those words? In long ago days, when those words were offered from one kindred in Christ to another, they were basically saying, whatever I have that you need is yours. When you are hungry, I will feed you. When you are thirsty, I will give you drink. When you are naked and homeless, I will give you a cloak and give you shelter. That is the peace of Christ. How many of us today would say those words with that meaning, not just to friends and family, people we know and love, but to everyone that we meet. My hope is that we all would, but I suspect that there would be hesitation on the part of some, at least for a while. Another good example of things that we say without really thinking about it anymore is the Lord's Prayer. There's little doubt that many have strong feelings about the Lord's Prayer about making sure that we say it and make, making sure we say it right, that we say trespasses and trespassers and not debts and debtors like some people say. And some people even have a preference of where it falls in service. But how do we not weep openly and weakly when we say these words? The, the deep request to God, but for daily bread, both physical and spiritual, the hope that the wrongs that we bring before God will be forgiven, the certainty that through trial and temptation, God will guide us and encourage us that even in the darkest times, God will embrace us. I guess what I'm saying is that when you go to do something that's part of your faith life, take a moment. Take a moment and think about what it means to you, why you're doing it. When we get back to a time where we can do this, before you sit in that pew that you've always sat in, think about why you sit there. Think about why you sit there beyond, it's my pew. And imagine the change in perspective that comes with sitting somewhere else. When you sing hymns, think about those words and what they mean, why they might be transformative along with sounding beautiful. And for those hymns, that you don't like, that aren't the old favorites, remember that God called us to make a joyful noise and that music is a gift. And when you say the Lord's Prayer today, I want you to take your time. I'm going to slow down in leading so that we can soak up the words as we say them together. And when you hear stories of faith from week to week, remember that they are just as much about you, about us, as they are about Christ and his followers. So let us rediscover the reason that we are practicing our faith, and then let us live joyfully that faith that we have found all over again. Let us pray. Guide us, O Christ, to a faith made new. Help us to see with new eyes your world, your word in our world. Hear with fresh ears the stories of faith that once drove us to wonder. Feel with hearts full of your love, your presence with us here in this time and everywhere we go. We ask this and all things in your name, O Christ. Amen. I think now we have something special taking place in the sanctuary. The side so they can see. Pat, on behalf of the choir, we would like to give you this little gift. And uh, I believe uh, we would just like to thank you for all your help. It's been amazing and we really, really appreciate it. And I believe uh, Sally has something to say from the congregation. Good morning, everyone. Um, on behalf of the congregation, I would like to thank not only Pat, 
but Ron, for all the support that you have offered us over the past year. Um, it's just, I don't know how to put it all in words, but I think you know how much we appreciate it. Um, you came into our lives this year at a time where we were hurting and, um, and you patched us up very well. So um, on behalf of the congregation, um, we have um, this orchid for you, <laughs> which I will deliver to your home um, after the service. So thank you once again to you and Ron. We're, um, we're indebted to your, your faith and guidance. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Sally. And I think now we're going to move into a time of music as uh, we sing together and are led uh, by those in the sanctuary uh, for Draw the Circle Wide. Stand up and do the actions yeah. to this song. Really enter in and draw that circle wide. Thank you so much for leading us in that. And now uh, many of you will remember our minute for mission. Uh, it's taken on a new format in uh, 2021. And so now let us take a moment as we uh, watch this brief video telling, the story, telling Linda's story. Did you know that one in five Canadians live with at least one disability? That's 6.2 million people. Disability is an issue that affects all of us. That's why the United Church of Canada partners with people from other denominations to raise awareness. People like Anglican disability activist Linda Katsuno, who is widely considered a pioneer in the field. I see myself as somebody that's a 
child of God, I see myself as someone who can give back. It really raises a question of mutuality. I hope that's how people see me. I hope they don't see me as somebody who is unable to do something. Many people think of the issue of disabilities as people who suffer. It's a social exclusion of people that leads to injustice. There is still so much more work to be done to participate in the liturgy. Liturgy means the work of the people. So we have every right to sort of claim our place at the table and that has to be a theology that we, we work towards, a theology of inclusion. Your generosity supports events and education that help create healthy, strong, welcoming communities. Communities where no one is left out, where we are all seen as children of God. Let's build a world where everyone belongs. Make a gift today. So as you can see, the the mission and service is a little bit little bit different from what we are what we are used to. But I I really thought that hearing people telling their stories would uh, bring into focus the work that's being done, uh, not just uh, close to home but all around the world. Uh, and so as we think about the ways that we give, that we build the kingdom together, uh, I want you to to think about uh, the the different things that you give to, whether it's the church, whether it's M and S. Uh, and as you can see, we have lots of different ways to be able to do that. Whether you give of your time, talent, or treasure, uh, we will find a way to make your gift a part of the building up of God's kingdom. And so as we reflect on that work, let us join together in singing our offertory dedication hymn, As With Gladness Benevolent. Thank you very much. And now uh, let us join together in our prayer of dedication as it comes up on the screen here. Um, yes, let us, well, next one. There we go. Let us offer these words together as we uh, seek God's blessing on our lives and the gifts that we give. Let us pray. We give, O oh God, not out of habit or obligation, but because we are joyfully called to serve in your name. Receive all that we are, bless all that we are. Encourage and empower us as we continue to build communities of love and support. We ask this and all things in the strong name of Christ, our brother and savior. Amen. We have heard the word and we have sought God's blessing in our lives. Let us open ourselves up to the deep faith that lies within us. Lift your burdens to the one who longs to share the load. Be reminded of the connection that we have with one another and with God. Hear us now, O God, as we lift our prayers to you. Hear us, O God, as we pray for a world for our, our lives transformed. As we strive to reconnect with our roots, with the roots of our faith, we are reminded that the road of living our faith is not always an easy one. And so we pray this day for our kindred in this world who cannot worship and practice their faith 
free from danger or prejudice. Especially today, we pray for the congregation of Bedford United in Nova Scotia, who were this past week victims of a break-in that resulted in damage to their sacred space and graffiti on their signs. Move in the hearts of those who carried out these acts of vandalism and help them realize the hurt that they have caused. Inspire in them a heart transformed by your grace. Move in the lives of those who call Bedford United home and calm fears that have been stirred up by these acts. Help us all as we strive to be communities that live and share your love, O oh God. Hear us as we pray for one another. In the same way that we strive to find new ways to reconnect to our faith over the last year, we have been discovering new ways to reconnect with one another. The pandemic has done much to divide us, O oh God, but we, as you know, are a stubborn lot and have found safe ways to reach out to family and friends to keep the bonds that hold us together strong. And so today we pray for friends and family neighbors and strangers who are struggling through these times, whether they are in orange, red, or in lockdown. Give us all the patience and the wisdom that we need to follow the guidelines, the rules that are there to protect us. Hear us, O oh God, as we pray for everyone we know and everyone we don't know, as we navigate these strange and difficult times together. Lastly, we bring before you our most personal prayers, O oh God of compassion. Hear us as we offer these prayers aloud and in silence. We pray this day that your grace and love be with Patrick, with Margaret, with Joan, with David, with Kirsten, with Heather, Walter, with Jamie. Give each of them the strength that they need to stand in the midst of what they face. Give them the courage to walk the road that they are walking, knowing that you are with them. And now hear our prayers for those people and situations that we name in the silence of this moment. These are the prayers of your people, O God, prayers for ourselves and for the world. Hear them as we bring them together in the prayer that Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now as we prepare to go into the world, let us sing together. May the God of hope go with us. Justice. 
speed us on our way, bringing light and hope to every land and race. Praying, let us work for peace, singing, share our joy with all, working for a world that's new, faithful when we hear Christ's call. May the God of healing free the earth from fear, freeing us for peace both treasured and pursued. May the God of love keep our commitment clear to a world restored to human life renewed. Praying, let us work for peace, singing, share our joy with all, working for a world that's new, faithful when we hear Christ's call. And now, as we prepare to send ourselves out into the week, uh, don't forget that we do stick around for a few minutes afterwards to uh, chat and catch up as we did beforehand. Um, and, uh, and another reminder that, uh, yes, we will be having youth groups starting up as well as confirmation classes with uh, information to come out on that uh, this week. And now let us join responsively as we send one another into the world. Renewed in our faith. We will go from this place to share our faith with others. Encouraged by our Creator. We will go and heal what we can and share God's love freely. Partnered with Christ. We will support one another as we move from worship to service. Go now with the love of God in your hearts, with the peace of Christ in your hands, and with the power of the Holy Spirit at your backs, to share the good news that you've heard this day. Amen. Can't hear the music in the sanctuary. <laughs> <laughs> 